G'day guys, Moose here. Like always, your safety is a massive priority for me. So today's safety video, we're gonna demonstrate the bandsaw. I'm gonna go through some safety tips, some things to look out for when you're gonna buy one, maintenance, and how to set it up so you're nice and safe. All right, let's get cracking. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> like always, from my family to yours, we love that you guys are involved in the feedback we've been getting. Like always, spread the word about sawdust and chrome. Do the likes, the shares, the subscribes, the notifications. You guys know what to do. If you have something you'd like me to do a demo on in particular that I haven't done yet, please send a comment. I'd love, I'd love to help you out. And make sure you stick around for the safety tips. There's five hot tips to keep you out of harm's way. All right, now we'll get into it. All right, a quick shot of my bandsaw. So to be honest, I don't use the bandsaw a lot, but when I need it, it is super handy. A few things you need to consider. A bandsaw is, if I open up the top, any bits. The band saw is there's two wheels and the band blade is one continuous blade. Band saws come in a, like hundreds of different sizes. So this is the top. The top wheel is tensioned and at the back of it can be aligned. The tension is how much tension is on the blade so that will crank up. The tighter it is the straighter I guess the nicer straighter cut you'll get. But there's a balance. If it's too tight, um, it's easy to snap blades, and we really don't want to do that on a bandsaw. If we pan down, the bottom wheel is kind of the driver. In mine, mine's a freestanding unit. The motor's in the base. It has a pulley and a belt that drives this. So the motor drives the bottom wheel and the top wheel is simply for tensioning and the alignment. That's mine. What I need you, oh, what you'll consider when you're at the shops, if you're keen to buy one, is you'll have, they'll talk about a few things. What will decide what you get is the size that you'll need. So they'll talk about this height is what's important, the depth of your table is important, and how much room you have between the frame and the blade. So you kind of really have to think about what purpose your bandsaw is going to be. Um, this is only a small one, um, but it's perfect for us. Like I was saying, I don't use it if, like hundreds of times at all. If you know you're going to use a bandsaw a lot, if Brocky pans up a smidge, Mine's only a small kind of, it's a three quarter horsepower. Depending on what you're up to, like if you're a wood turner, you'll be cutting a lot of kind of bulb lengths up. You're gonna need like two, three horsepower at least. Um, you're gonna need more space and you'll definitely need more space. Um, we get away with this one. So horsepower is a factor to consider. Like I was saying, mine's a freestanding mobile unit. Um, works for us because to be honest everything has to be mobile in our garage and in our little um wood shop container because we run out of room pretty quickly so that was important to us but um you can get smaller benchtop versions um just as good just as powerful um that might be perfect for you and i guess like always um our budget comes to comes into it so it's nice to say Bend as much as you can, get the best quality you can, but that's just not realistic sometimes. So depending on what your budget is, that might decide what you end up as well. Um, by all means, hit up the Facebook marketplace, secondhand places, um, you'd be surprised what you can get. Um, that's where we got ours. All right, let's get into the next bit. All right, let's set it up. To be honest, depending on where you buy it from, it should come set up ready to go, but here's just a couple things you need to get right, just in case. 
at the back of mine. Rock your pans up. This is the tensioning knob. This is what you turn clockwise if you want to add tension to the wheel on the inside. As I twist it, the wheel will go up, adding tension to the blade. This one here in the center is the alignment, um, I guess, alignment knob. As you twist it in and out, it tilts the top wheel a little bit like that, and that's what helps us keep the blade tracking nicely down the center. Oh, and this guy here is what I use. I undo it, and this is where I adjust uh, my safety guard. So that's really important too. Spin it back around. Down here at the bottom, that's the dust extraction kind of outlet. To be honest, depending on what I'm doing, if it's only a few cuts, I won't worry about it. But if I'm going to spend some time on it, I will hook up my extraction to this guy and it takes most of the dust away. It's perfect. Um, note the bearing. Please make sure you have a bearing or a stop of some sort. It should be a bearing. This is what prevents the blade from being pushed too far back. In a worst case scenario, it gets pushed off either the top or the bottom wheel. So that bearing's important too. Um, and my last point is, and we'll have to kind of tweak the camera angle, and I'll show you what a lot of people get wrong, and um, it's the easiest thing to fix. And people forget to make sure that their table is perfect zero degrees, nice and horizontal. So make sure yours is set up right on your, um, your zero. It's not often, but it does have the functionality to be able to tilt your table a little bit left or right if you need a certain degree cut. But for most of the time, make sure it's still on zero and she's up nice and tight. All right, let's go. All right, now I've got five safety tips that will keep you out of harm's way, you and your family members. First one, it's a rule for everything, is your PPE, your personal protective gear. I've got my earmuffs, I've got these special shatterproof glasses, but make sure you get safety glasses of some sort, super important. With the bandsaw in particular, please make sure you don't have any kind of loose clothing or um, jewelry or anything that could get caught. Long hair, um, geez, Moose in year nine would have had to put his hair up. Um, yeah, not these days. Uh, a bit of common sense, make sure nothing can get caught. Um, we'll zoom in and I'll show you a couple other little things. All right, that was tip number one, PPE. Safety tip number two is the height of the guard. So please set it at whatever you need, about five mil above the timber that you're cutting. The idea, it has two functions. It means I can't get any pieces of me as well as my timber through the gap. And on a bandsaw in particular, you've got a few functions down, down here that kind of help the blade, I guess, stabilize a bit. So you'll get a better cut, you'll get a better job. So don't be lazy. If you're cutting something different, always adjust your height. Doesn't take long. And uh, I don't want you to damage something that you can't grow back. Safety tip number three. See the circle? In all of them, there'll be a circle of some sort. That I refer to as a no-go zone. So your fingers should never be anywhere in that little guy. There's no excuse for it. There's always different ways you can move your hands or you can use a scrap of timber, but you should never have your hands anywhere close to that. All right. Safety tip number four is I should never see any parts of your body in line with the blade fingers or thumbs in particular. So if this is what I've got to cut, I have to be left and right of the line of the blade. Whether it's curves, straights, you shouldn't see anything in its way. And my last tip, and this is a once in a blue moon, hope it never happens to your tip. If your blade breaks for any reason, it usually will bundle up up the top you find it folded up in here. Occasionally, honestly, once in a blue moon, it will pop out and it either goes kind of left or right. So the hot tip is your offsiders or your family members or a little helper, they're not allowed to stand here. So 
So pick a better alternative. Brock, did you get a haircut? No, I got the mole cut. <laughs> if you like that, leave a comment. Now my hot tips. I'll just give you a few that get you underway, um, something to gain a bit of confidence with. My first hot tip, depending on the size of your bandsaw and the blade width in particular, that really kind of governs how tight of a curve of a cut you can do. Um, some bandsaw blades, the, the blade can be quite massive versus they get quite small, almost scroll saw size, and they can um, almost turn back on themselves. So my blade is about a centimetre, so I know roughly what kind of, how tight of a radius it can do. You'll get to a point where you'll hear your bandsaw tell you, I think that's enough before I'm going to break. It will kind of squeal at you a little bit. There will be a sound that's not, sh that's not normal. Um, that's your machine telling you to stop, to back out. Um, I'll give you a couple of tips on how you can avoid that. Like always, no matter what we're doing, we always want to cut on the waist side of the line. So for this curve, for example, I want to cut here. This curve I've marked, I want to cut on the inside. So no matter what you're doing, it's got to be obvious what's the waist side of the line. Because if you get a little bit wrong, if you're either side of the line, um, that's when practice makes perfect, but um, it kind of will damage jobs a little bit. So always make it obvious the waist sides of your line. I'll make a couple cuts. You guys can listen to some rock music because it is this pencil is quite noisy. I want you to take note of my hand, where they go. I want you to take note that I'm always just outside on the waist sides of the lines. And you'll see me move this around a lot compared to actually I don't go through the saw very quickly. That's the key. You're watching the kind of the blade and the timber quite closely. Your hands are moving a lot, but don't rush. Don't ever go too quick. Again, if you think you're kind of a bit out of control or you're crashed into something you don't want to do, um, just stop, pause, back out a smidge and reassess. All right, I'll do a couple cuts. couple things to note. Um, straight cuts obviously I, I get easier. When you're cutting radius, when you're on the outside, the outside curves are easier than when you're kind of going in. So for this one, I'm nice and schmick there. I'm a little bit outside the line here, but my hot tip is I can sand that till it's perfect. I can sand that till it's perfect. If we crash into it, it's timber we can't get back. For this one, I'm going to do a nice cut here. You'll see that it's much easier. When I do this one, the bandsaw's not going to like that tight of a curve. So I'm going to show you what we call relief cuts. How we can kind of cut down and I can do a few relief cuts that will help me get through this job. Alright, watch this one.
My next hot tip, sorry, just getting rid of my earmuffs. My next hot tip is, I don't know if you noticed, what I like to do, because it kind of looks after our bandsaw blades as well, is when I first start, I'm really cautious to kind of ease into it. I'll travel like normal and I'll ease out of it. In particular, ease out, because the bandsaw blade, it might kind of, it kind of pops a little bit. So, take note of that one. We'll do it right now. Right, my second last hot tip you need to think a little bit before you start cutting into stuff so I've got two long sections I want to get rid of the bandsaw doesn't love it if you have to let's say you make a cut all the way down and you have to back out that far you know how we, I mentioned that bearing earlier that stops the blade getting pushed off the back there's nothing to stop it getting pushed off the front so backing out long distances is not a great idea if you can avoid it. So for this example, I'm going to do the short, then the long. So um, you kind of have to plan out what you're doing. Just some advice about fences on bandsaws. Depending on what yours is like at home. So, I have to lift the guard above this to suit my fence, because I'm a little bit close. So that's something I've got to be careful for. Also, the fence on a bandsaw, even though it might be lined up perfect, it's locked into position, Sometimes, and to be honest, more often than not, they're not 100% accurate. The blade will still wander a little bit left and right. So I might have the fence where I want it, and I cut all the way down. You might find that it drifts a little bit left or right. Just something to keep an eye out for. So I like to make a lot of test cuts to see if everything's kind of doing as it should. And sometimes I'm more accurate just to do it by eye and by hand than use the fence. Let's see how this one goes. All right, same deal. I've got a long cut, then a short cut. So I'll show you what you do if you make a long cut and you don't want to back out too far. Simple, just stop the machine, stop the blade back it out nice and gentle. So if you do get caught out, you stop the machine. All right. I'll make this last cut, and then I've got one more point to finish with. To f I'm gonna get rid of that bit, say goodbye to that. I guess the key point is with, um, as you start to practice is, like I said earlier, you're watching closely I know what the waist is, and my hands move around quite a lot, but take it easy, don't feel rushed when you're going through your timber. Don't feel like you've got to cut quick.
All right, and my final, final tip is everything practice makes perfect. Just get out there, cut up a bunch of scraps and have some fun. All right, let's do some maintenance. All right, if you're still with us, thank you, you're the best. Last but not least is the maintenance on this. Um, Bandsaw's pretty low maintenance, to be honest. All I ever do is um, obviously give it a good kind of dusting as you've used it. Um, you'll find down here in particular, you get a bit of a build up of sawdust and debris in the bottom section. So, I don't know, routinely check that out. Um, make sure that it's nice, dry. Um, the tabletop can get a little bit gunky, in particular if you're cutting up um, green timbers. So uh, every now and then, give it a good scotch bright, a little bit of um, oh, WD-40, fixes everything. Um, and lastly, and please don't persist, if your gut's telling you that your blade's a bit blunt, it's time for a new blade, don't persist. Um, Dull blades means your machine's working harder than it is, it means you're putting more effort into the timber than you should, and something kind of has to give, and unfortunately sometimes it's us. Again, my rule is we don't damage stuff that we can't grow back. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you learn a few things. I hope this gets you over the line to go buy a bandsaw. Um, I'd love it if you let me know that you did. My rule is more toys you got, more tools you got. Um, the more moments and stuff we can do in the garages. From my family to yours, we love you guys involved. Don't forget to hit the likes and subscribes and spread the word about Sawdust and Chrome. And um, again, if there's something else you'd like me to kind of do a video on, let me know, I'm happy to do it. All right, check out the other ones too. If you haven't come across them yet already, check out my projects. I've got beginners and intermediate ones. There's a moose shield in particular that will look great in your garage and it is the perfect kind of combo project for the bandsaw. If you smash that little project out with your new bandsaw, um, you'll be all over it. You'll learn a heap of stuff just from that project alone. From my family to yours, I love that you guys are involved. Keep up the feedback, spreading the word. Do your likes and subscribes and the notifications. Um, I really appreciate it, my family does, to yours. All right. Get out of here, get down to the shops. Look after yourselves as well. I guess on its horizontal axis. Wrong, vertical axis. Bugger. <laughs> All right, we'll start again. Up to, please. Bugger. Bah, bugger. <laughs> bugger. Sorry, babe. <laughs> that was horrible. I think that's it. Checking that was okay. Yeah, that was vibing. Vibing? All right. Let's go riding. Oh, yeah, let's fix your bike. Let's go riding. Yep. Who's your favourite parent? Nope.